Hello and welcome to Taboratum channel. Today we will be talking about watertight 3D prints. Um, to make it a bit tougher, we will make a watertight 3D print in a spiral slash vase mode, which means that we will have only one perimeter or one wall, whichever noun you prefer, to make it watertight. Uh, if you can make it work with single wall, for sure you can make it uh, with multiple walls, so once you uh, once you learn how to do it properly in the vase mode, no other watertight print should be a problem. Okay, so so basically, uh, what you need to ensure when doing a watertight three D print is uh, you don't want any gaps in the print, right? So you you need to make sure that the adhesion between layer layers is as good as possible. To do that, the easiest way is to use a wider line, right? So width of your of your line should be more than you usually do. So I for a 0.4 millimeter uh, nozzle, I recommend 0.8 millimeter. It might seem strange, but basically every uh, nozzle and every printer is capable of printing twice the the, the nozzle size usually. Uh, what you need to remember is that there is more. Uh, it's tougher for the printer to push the filament that will form a um, twice the width uh, lined path. So you need to print slower, or you you may uh, encounter problems with skipping and other things like that. So let's switch to uh, Prusa slicer. And uh, I will show you how I do that. So here is a very simple uh, thing that I've designed some time ago. It's a container that I use uh, for my coffee machine as the when it washes itself, rinsing, then the, this waste water goes into such container. And as you can see, it's uh, it's a solid object. So what I do, I print it in in a in a vase mode. So I have here the my watertight settings in Prusa Slicer. So let's get here and we can do a compare. And let's compare the standard draft settings with my watertight change. So what you can see here is that we are changing the extrusion width from whatever was the standard around 0.44 for the 0.4 nozzle size to 0.8. So basically everything is uh, wider. Plus we have 0% infill as usual in the, um, in the vase mode. Uh, and down here at the bottom we have number of perimeters one, which is obvious for the uh, for the spiral mode. Spiral vase is set to true. There are no top solid layers because we want to have only the bottom over there. And one pretty important thing here is the max volumetric speed. Uh, zero is unlimited, and I um, dialed it down to four. Basically, volumetric speed is the amount of uh, filament that the printer is can push through, through the nozzle, and it's expressed in cubic millimeters uh, per second, usually. And uh, you can manually limit the sp printing speed for, for, for such a print. I did it uh, using the uh, reducing the max volumetric speed because I know what is the max volumetric speed of my printer. I will make an um, I will make a video on that one day. But for now, the only important thing is that we limit the speed. So so basically, we go for the spiral mode. We make the path wider, and we limit the speed. That's it. And if I go to the platter and slice it. Uh, um, you can see the speed is here, so you can see that it is 20 something millimeters per second, so fairly slow. 
Uh, and if we go to the first layer, the first layer is even slower and it is 0.4 because that's the default for the Prusa slicer. And then as you can see, if we go up, we are doing twice the width. Uh, and once we start the spiral mode, uh, you can see it is, um, it is much wider than usually. And we are printing 0.8 width, and the height of a layer is uh, 0.24, right? So you can, if you imagine the shape of, 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 this, of this layer, you can probably see it in over here, that it is pretty wide, and the whole idea is that it will stick well one layer to another layer, Plus, in spiral mode, you don't have a seam, so you don't have to worry about if the seam is watertight or not. Okay, so let's move it to the... let's uh, send it to the printer. And let's see how it prints. So here we have our six seconds time lapse. You can't see much that basically it's printing out in this nice orange filament and let's do some tests and I've decided to do the test on the induction cooker so you have this glass surface if even a drop would be uh, getting through the print you will see it on, on, the, on the glass uh, surface so here is the printed container uh, yeah it has some black parts because I was just changing the filament here is a jar of water and let's pour some water into it and let's do the, the test. And uh, I can tell you that you can, you can make prints even airtight and even uh, able to hold uh, some pressure. Uh, maybe I'll make a video on that one day. And as you can see, yeah, I'm turning it. There's not a drop of water coming off, so you can see the glass is still... Uh, uh, dry, yeah, and you see, you can use this corner of the print uh, of, of this container to pour water into something else. Yeah, you see the drops of water, and yeah, it is watertight, so exactly what we wanted to achieve. So that's basically it. Um, thanks for watching, and happy printing watertight uh, things. You can do pots for your plants, you can do whatever your imagination tells you. Take care. Cheers. Bye.